I can see there's an absolute rocket coming up behind me here. This is the racing version of the GT3. So we've got the Manti GT3 in the front in the dark gray, and we've got the GT3 RS in white. Welcome back to It's Track Time. Chin Track Day is Coda, June of 2025. It's like 100 degrees on the track here. The ambient temperature is around 96 degrees, but obviously you're on pavement, so it's a lot hotter. Coming down the front straight, and I can see there's an absolute rocket coming up behind me here. So I kind of slow down, and there it is, a 992 GT3 Cup. And so this is the race, racing version of the GT3, um, kind of the entry racing version of the GT3. They have another one that's higher than that. But you can see this thing is absolutely hauling ass on the track. Once I get past this 718, I'll have a little bit of clear track here and you can see him just pulling away from me on the S's. And once we get to kind of a steady state here, he's not disappearing super fast, but whenever he slows down and then accelerates, you can see him just absolutely leaving me in the dust. He's driving a similar line to the line that I'm driving. Now coming up over the top of 10 here, going into 11, you can see the big gap that he opened up there. And the 911s can really accelerate coming out of turn nine and way faster than what I can accelerate. In the braking zone, you can see he, he was a little bit closer and now of course, there he goes. And so he's absolutely hauling ass. The white car that you see up there in front of him is a GT3 RS. And then in front of that is a GT3 Manti. So that's the full Manti kit on a 992 GT3. So effectively what you have up here is three 992s You've got the Manti version, you've got the GT3 RS, and then you've got the Cup. And we come around uh, turn 12 here, and you can see the Cup now is about ready to pass the Manti. And around, and look, look at him accelerate. He, he's just absolutely hauling ass. Now we come around here, and he's already cleared the Manti now, and he's heading into the carousel. And once I get around the corner here on 15, and you watch him, he's gone. <laughs> so, so just like that, um, completely buried us and I, I don't think we're ever going to see him again so so that, that has the same engine as, as the other cars we're looking at here and so the question is why is that thing so damn fast and so let's try to answer that so to help answer this question I'm going to use a tool that was developed by a track friend of mine that has a demand 4.5 liter 718 GTS and so he had more horsepower he screwed on the Dundon Aero kit so he had a series of modifications to this car and didn't really know what the, the time should be on a given track. So he spent like seven months, and you can see that he's on revision 82 of this tool, trying to correlate this thing on different tracks around the country. And you know, Circuit of the Americas is one of the tracks that he, he targeted. So this thing's called Track Car Simulator Pro, and it's at trackcarsimulator.com. It's freely available. You can go out there and play with it. He threw me a link, and I started playing with it, and it was answering a lot of the questions that I had. So I, I found this thing to be real useful when you're starting to modify a car and asking, what should I expect by this modification? Or, or better yet, before I buy this modification, what should I expect? And is it worth the money? Um, and so you can break the thing down and see what each of these modifications does to your lap time. Um, so I started with a base GT4 RS, the way it's configured out of the factory. Um, 200 wear summer tires, 3,200 pounds, which is the curb weight, medium aero, which is basically the, the aero package that's on all the GT cars, ex excluding the GT3 RS. The horsepower is set to 490, which is the factory horsepower. And if you take all of those into consideration, it's predicting that the lap time would be at 218.7. And now this is, uh, this is for a very good driver. So this is something like what Randy, not me, but something that like Randy could achieve in the, in the car. On a, on a good day making full power. And of course there's air that creeps in if it's hot, the track's hot, if uh, the air temperature is hot, and you're not making power, it's pulling timing, relative differences in the drivers. So, so you, you really should look at the, not the absolute time, but the delta between two times with and without a, a particular um, feature. So I'm gonna rattle off a couple times here and then I'm gonna break down the deltas, which you can see the relative change from each of these uh, modifications. So that's where the car would be out of the factory, set up correctly for the track. And then let's move to where I'm at today. So I'm gonna be on a dot slick, which is a Hoosier R7, 3,200 pounds curb weight. I'm gonna to go to Dundon Arrow, which is the high arrow. 
I'm going to move the horsepower up to 520, which is with the header back exhaust from, from Dundon. And that puts me out at 215.1. And ironically, that's the time you could see from my last video with Randy that he was chasing. He was chasing a low 15. You could see that he had one on the clock, but he couldn't get around the traffic to, to actually realize that time. But you can see that's the time the car was, could achieve with no traffic. So this looks pretty accurate. And then the answer that I was trying to get next was what happens if I put slicks on this thing? And in the last video, I talked about that. Well, if you go over here and switch over to uh, like a Pirelli slick, now you're at a 213.3. So that shows you, you know, what you could achieve if you got a real sticky tire underneath this car with the downforce. Now let's take this thing and break it down per change and show you what you could expect per change on the GT4 RS. The simulator says that the predicted base time of the GT4 RS out of the factory is 2 minutes, 18.7 seconds. So now let's take and go through the changes that I've made to my car and look at the delta for each of these. First one, the anti-gravity battery. The simulator says that's worth 2 tenths of a second at Coda. The Hoosier R7s, a lot of people predicted this was a massive change. Um, looking at the prediction from the simulator, it's saying it's 9 tenths of a second. So almost a second, nine tenths of a second to go from a 200 wear tire to a Hoosier R7, which is around a 40 wear tire. Okay, this is one that a lot of people have made to their cars, uh, maybe not to this extent, but a lot of exhaust changes are typically made to these cars. This is a more extreme one, which has a header back system and the full Dundon kit. And this one is predicted to give you about eight tenths of a second out at Coda. And that's about a 30 horsepower change across the entire rev range. Okay, then the next one is the Dundon Aero Package, which is a 4X increase in downforce versus the factory, plus the MCS suspension. And so the simulator is predicting that's a 1.6 second change out at Coda. And then the one that I was looking at, but I haven't done yet, is going to slick. So... From this delta, from, from taking everything that I've got with the Hoosier R7s and then adding slicks on top of that, it's an additional 1.75 second um, reduction in lap time at Dakota. So if you were to go from a 200 wear tire to um, slicks, that would be nearly three seconds. So it's about 2.75 seconds is what you would get if you went from the factory tire to a full blown slick. Now, it, that obviously is the biggest bang for the buck, but it's not just changing the tires. You have to change the wheels. You have to change the brakes to get the wheel over the top, and then you have to change the tires. So it's not a, a simple change. That one is one of the biggest bangs for the buck that you can do. If you now look at the total across all of the changes and you rattle down through the accumulated times, what I've done so far is about 3.5 seconds worth of change over the base um, time. And if you were to throw the slicks in on top of that, it would be 5.3 seconds worth of, worth of change on the lap time. So pretty significant. So now let's go down and look at the GT3 Cup and why it's so fast. The 992 GT3 Cup, why is it fast? Um, why is it faster than my car? Why was it leaving me in the dust? Assuming the drivers are the same. And I, I don't know the driver in that car, but I assume he's... he's uh, as good or better than me. Um, I, let's, let's put it this way. I've never, I've never passed a GT3 Cup, okay? So regardless of who the driver is in these cars, and typically the people that buy these cars are not amateurs that you don't put that kind of money and have a crew around you if you don't have some skill at driving out there. So you don't tend to see these weekend warriors that just show up scratching their heads and they jump in a GT3 Cup and drive it around the track. So most of the people that, that spend that kind of money and put that kind of a crew behind themselves typically have some experience in the car. So they're, they're all good drivers. I've never seen a slow one on the track at Dakota. So assuming that's all the same, I'm starting with where my car is, which is 215.1. And now let's take the, the two big changes that are on that car. First, the weight. So that car, if you walk up to one of those cup cars and grab the doors and look at them and, and touch all of the, the panels, that thing's all carbon. The doors weigh like, it feels like they weigh two and a half pounds. So they're extremely light. The glass is all that, that Lexan kind of glass that, that it's really lightweight. So all the, the weight of the windows is out. Everything, the roof and all that stuff is carbon. So 
that car is incredibly light. It turns out that the street version, my car is 3,200 pounds. The street version of a GT3 is around 3,200 pounds. This thing it weighs 2,700 pounds. So first let's peel the weight off and let's go all the way down to 2,700 pounds. So if you're at 2,700 pounds and you would already be at a 213 and that's on a dot slick. So that's not even on a, on a, on a real Pirelli slick. And of course, these cars run on Pirelli Slick. So the second piece of this is to go to the soft Pirelli Slick. So let's do that. And now you're at a 2.11.6. So that's a smoking fast time. And that's what that car was running out there. I talked to the engineer of that car, and he said, yeah, that's, that's the time that we were running out there. And he said, in the hands of a really good pro driver, it can be even be lower than that. But that's what this thing is predicting. So the engine's the same. It's the same engine as we have in our street version of the GT3 and the GT3 RS and the GT4 RS. There's a cam difference in the GT3 RS that gives you a little more power than that. But the the cup car engine is the engine that's in the GT4 RS and the GT3. And so it's the same 520 horsepower. It has the, you know, a better exhaust system on it. So it kind of matches what Dundon has. So the two big changes are cutting the weight out, going down to 2,700 pounds, and then throwing a slick underneath it. And with those two changes, you're at a 2.11.6. And so that's why that car is completely burying me out there. Okay, now that the GT3 um, Cup has disappeared and blown our doors away, it's just us slow street cars. I'm holding up the back here. So we've got the Manti GT3 in the front in the dark gray. We've got the GT3 RS in white. And then I'm in the GT4 RS. I was talking to the Manti owner, He's, he was in the garage next to me and we were comparing cars and stuff and real similar set of modifications, one through Manti and one through Dundon on the two cars. The GT3 has a better suspension system right out of the factory with the double wishbone front and the multi-link rear. Engines are the same. And then we modified with better suspension components. So he's got the KW dampers, I've got the MCS dampers on my car. Downforce-wise, he has less downforce than me. He's on the Manti downforce, and I'm on the Dundon downforce package. That's the only advantage I have, is, is having the extra downforce. And if you put those numbers into the simulator, it's saying I have somewhere around a one-second advantage. And so the only place you're going to see me catching him is going to be on a high-speed corner, like the carousel would be an example of that. Everywhere else, we have the same power and he has arguably better handling than me. So it's kind of interesting um, to see how we do out here in the open air. He's going down the back straight now. We have similar power. I might have a little more drag because I have more downforce, but it's a pretty well-designed downforce kit that doesn't produce a lot of drag. So we should have a similar speed. Once we go through this braking zone, we're going to close down again and now we're getting a little closer to him as we go through. He's going to do the 9-11 line here and go deep on 13 and then cut back and, and pinch 14. And he pinches it so hard that he actually puts a tire in the dirt there. Sets up a smoke screen against me here. Now we come through 15, and now this is the only advantage I'm going to have. Once we get up to speed, we come through the carousel. As the simulator predicted, I should have about a one-second advantage, and that's where it's probably going to come in here. So you can see I'm kind of closing down the gap here. And then as we move into 19, I still have an advantage because it's a high speed piece. And then we go into 20 and then it's just a toss up here. So now he's letting me pull up in front of him here so I can have a pull out the front. I wish my rear camera was actually working. The rear camera was overheating in this. It only lasted like 10 minutes in this heat. So I don't have a rear view, but that would have been awesome if I had the rear view. You can see how he was staying up with me or, or closing the gap down. I'm still working on trying to cool that camera. So now we're back to the weight argument again. This is the C8 Z06. It weighs somewhere between three and 500 pounds more than the car I'm in. So let's take the, the metrics from these two cars and plug them into the simulator and see what it says. Okay, so for this experiment, let's start with the GT4 RS as configured in the video at a 215.1. And now let's start modifying this config to better match the Z06 that's in the video. First, we go to a 200 wear tire. 
Next, we lift the weight up by 300 pounds to 3,500 pounds, which is the lightest wet weight that I saw for this car. I think the one in the video is actually a, a convertible, but anyway, the, the lightest one that people seem to point at was a 3,500 pound car. Now, arrow, it's half the arrow of the Dundon kit. So let's move back to medium arrow. Horsepower, let's move it up to 670 horsepower, and you'd be a 16.8. And so the car in the video would max out at a 16.8 if it had a pro driver behind the wheel. So that kind of explains why the car is getting closed down by a GT4 RS. And now let's move it to the same tire. So let's go to a dot slick or the Hoosier R7 and you're at a 215.6. And so that is still a half a second slower per lap than the GT4 RS in the video. And so that kind of explains once again why we were getting the, the 4RS closing down on this car. If you were to make it the same weight as the GT4 RS and take it down to 3,200 pounds, you'd be at a 214.6. So now you'd be, you'd be like seven tenths of a second faster per lap than the GT4 RS. So that's where weight comes in. Even if you take the, the GT4 RS and let's just say the driver of the car weighed 100 pounds more than me. So let's say you took a football player and put him in my car and drove it. He would still, if you look at the simulator, it's gonna tell you that it's three tenths of a second per lap slower just by putting another 100 pounds in, in the driver's seat. You can see how, how sensitive these cars are to weight and that's why I was hoping that they would build a lighter Z06. But anyway, that hope that explains um, why we're seeing this gap close down between these two cars. So what you're seeing here is a complicated relationship between a number of variables. You've got a reduction in tire grip, you've got a reduction in downforce, you've got an increase in weight, and it's all being compensated for by an increase in power. So trying to sort through the intertwined relationships of all of these different variables is very complicated, which is why my friend developed this mathematical model to try to help sort these out. It helped on his car, it's helped me on my car to sort through the different modifications and what they were worth. It's gonna help me in the future to pick what my next change should be and which ones are worth doing. So check it out, it's at uh, trackcarsimulator.com. I'll put the link down below. It's free, um, he did it for the track community. Uh, check it out, give him some feedback on how the numbers match with your car and we'll see you at the track next time.